Welcome to another episode of Sky Bees. In the last episode, we set up this little bee apiary. And we got a wood bee, a water bee, a dirt bee, a cobble bee, a sand bee, and a normal bee. <laughs> and we were able to set these bees up in their little beehives. We also set up our entire jars crafting area. As you can see on our roster, we have a bunch of adorable and really awesome looking bees that are lined up in our short term goals. They're each their own little milestone and will allow us to unlock different epic mods. So, of course, we're gonna start off with our Iron Bee. That is our goal for today, and I'm very excited about it. Because in the last episode, we got all the bees we would need in order to breed them up. And would you look at that? We have honey to collect. Our very first honey, actually. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these couple of clay that I saved and we're gonna make two sheer parts and we're going to cook them up. Yummy, yummy clay, yummy, yummy shears. There we go. And put them together and we have ceramic shears. Very nice. And with these, we can come on in here and there we, we already have a campfire under here. So we're good to go. We, uh, we got six regular honeycomb. Kind of a bummer. <laughs> Hello, dirt bee. <laughs> He is kind of derpy, isn't he? <laughs> I'm so sorry. And while we wait for those to fill back up, we can actually upgrade the uh, the beehive. We can upgrade it all the way to tier four, but what we need next is the tier one. And that is just some grass. So actually what we can do is, easy as that. <laughs> So since we need a couple new beehives anyway, I'm gonna make these tier two right away. Now, in order to get to the next tier, we're gonna need beeswax and honeycomb. So we're not gonna get beeswax until we make ourselves a manual centrifuge. But there is our advancement. And, ooh, hold on, put that on pause. We have some more honeycomb. Okay, I think, I'm thinking we can only get <laughs> <laughs> regular honeycomb out of these beehives. So, um, let's upgrade these. But in order to upgrade these, I found that you have to have all the bees out of the beehive and out of the enclosure because um, breaking the beehive upsets them greatly. So in order to avoid any misunderstandings, we're gonna pick everyone up first and then pop down everyone's new home. We can upgrade these two while we already have them picked up, make a couple more campfires, and then place everyone right on down. And then we can release our little bee friends. Oh, that's wrong one, sorry buddy. There we go. Oh, look at them doing a spin. <laughs> I love them so much. And they should all pick, there we go, different beehives. It's random. You can make a little wand to kind of almost bind them to a certain beehive, but I found that it kind of doesn't work for very long. <laughs> they kind of decide to do their own thing in the end anyway. So for the bees that will need a constant, consistent supply of honeycomb, we will be putting them in their own little bee houses. While I waited for the bees to do their thing, I did a little bit more farming to of course make more bone meal, which we're gonna need in order to start Batania. By the next morning, the bees have done their thing and we had honeycomb to harvest. There we go. Now we have dirt honeycomb, wood honeycomb, water honeycomb, cobble honeycomb, and sand honeycomb. Perfect. Now a fun little trivia about this mod pack is that you can actually eat all of the different kinds of honeycomb. And while some of them may sound like they're not gonna taste very good, <laughs> Every single time you eat a new food item in the game, you have a chance to increase your hearts overall. So you can actually double and triple your row of hearts. So, what, what, uh, I, I need to be hungry. It's always worth giving your new bees product a try. Besides, 
what's the point of being a bee farmer if you don't even eat honey? You know, even if it's a little oddly specific kind of honey. Mmm, <laughs> dirt honey. <laughs> So I will be eating these when I'm hungry, but for now, I'm gonna keep collecting these in a chest right here <laughs> because we're gonna need to be consistently collecting a bunch of these. Now, remember how in the last episode I said, let's make a clay bee so we don't have to keep making clay with astral sorcery. Well, we can do that now. So let's make ourselves a clay bee. In order to make a clay bee, we're gonna need to breed our water and sand bee. And as you can see, they breed with leaves and sand. So let's grab one of each. And our water bee is here. Let's see, where is, where is our sand bee? Sand bee, sand bee. Oh, there's sand bee. Okay, perfect. That's for you, that's for you. And, oh, here he is! Ah, he's so cute! He's so cute! I love him. Now, the thing we have to be worried about with uh, with these baby bees is when they grow up, I, I'm sure you know that Minecraft bees can be a little, a little weird with their AI, even in vanilla Minecraft. One might even say they're a little buggy and um well when they grow up if they grow up in a beehive they can actually pop out and glitch into a block next to it not good so we'll use glass so they won't suffocate right well if you use glass then they'll actually glitch through the glass and then be out in the wild and float into the void. We don't want that for our little clay baby bee. So the best solution that I've come up with is what I like to call the incubation crystal. Let's build that real quick. And in between building, I will be harvesting honeycombs. I'm going to build out this way and just temporarily put it over here. I'm not sure where I want it in the long run, but it's something real quick and easy to uh, break down and build back up again. And of course, we have to make sure that we install the mini heart attack ledge, TM. But first, bees and a good sleep too. So basically, we're gonna want an inner and outer layer for the bees to grow up in. We want to give them an inner layer so that they can grow through the glass if they need to. Giving one block of space in between all this glass so that they don't suffocate. Then we place another wall <laughs> of glass. And there is the incubation chamber. <laughs> it's not... It's not the prettiest thing in the world. I mean, it's not that bad, but it's not super pretty. But I've tried other versions of this, trying to make it look more like a crystal, trying to make it look, you know, all pretty, like a dome. No, no, don't do it. It doesn't work. I've lost so many bees and so much time to bees escaping. They just, they just kind of, see how, see how he's flying into the corner there against the glass? What they do is they fly into the corner of the two glass corners are touching each other they'll just they'll just glitch right through it and then they're then they're, they're, they're gone <laughs> not not a word they're just gone yeah so where the cobblestone is all the corners and that seems that seems to fix it he actually ended up staying in there he grew up in there but normally they end up popping straight through the glass and then they're in this little area on the outside the like secondary chamber and they're fine, they're good, they're great. They just hang out in here until I catch them in a jar. So I give it like a three on the prettiness scale, but I give it a 10 out of 10 for getting the job done. I have gotten a little bit hungry. So let's see if we can eat one of each of these and see if we get any extra hearts. See the little particle effect? That means it's the first time we've eaten it. There we go. What a new unique flavor. You've gained two hearts. Nice. 
And if we fill all the way up, there we go. There are the yellow hearts. Nice. And uh, those are permanent. Now for production bees, bees that are more than basic, they're productive. Um, and they're very useful for all the resources we will continuously need from them. I like to make at least three of those bees to go in their own little beehive. So I'm gonna breed up two more clay bees and put them in our incubator um, because they do take a while to grow up and I'd like to get them all going as soon as possible. There's one. While I waited for the bees to breed again and also to grow up, I grew a bunch of trees because we're gonna be doing some building soon. boy band <laughs> oh my goodness look at them <laughs> that's perfect now once our little bee babies have all grown up they're gonna need a nectar block just like our other bees like our dirt bee needed dirt our wood bee needed wood but our clay bee are more advancedly advancedly bred <laughs> <laughs> Our more advanced bees are gonna need a curated nectar block. Yeah, a, uh, a block of clay is not gonna cut it for this little guy. They're gonna need a clay bee nectar block, which is through the tempered glass jar heated with two sand honeycomb blocks and two water honeycomb blocks and a little bit of honey. We've got enough, thankfully, for our water and our sand block. So just like making regular honeycomb, but uh, it's just a little bit different. And the honeycomb blocks actually give us the achievement for, where is it? There it is. <laughs> In case you wanted a little bit of the scale of this mod pack, these are all the bee blocks. <laughs> oh, oh, we gotta make, um, we gotta make the OG first in order to unlock them all. There we go. See, there's our sand bee. There's the water bee block. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? Oh my goodness, there's so many bees. I'm so excited. So in order to get that honey we're gonna need in order to fuse these honey blocks, um, we could, you would think, waltz in here and yeah. Nope, that's we can't get honey this way. <laughs> you can only shear the beehives. So, the only way to get honey is by a more realistic means, actually. We're gonna make a manual centrifuge. The centrifuge is what's going to allow us to basically press both honey, beeswax, and the, uh, the main contents of the honeycomb. Cobblestone from cobblestone honeycomb, and clay from clay honeycomb. <laughs> That's quite the mouthful. We're gonna need two cast iron ingots, one barrel, and a lever. And there we have our manual centrifuge. Very nice. I'm gonna pop this. Mm, we're getting kind of crowded over here. Right over here, I'm gonna put all our honeycomb in this chest. And all we have to do is put our glass bottles in here grab some, how about some dirt honeycomb? We're gonna put our dirt honeycomb in here and we're gonna crouch, hold right click. Yep, this, this is our life now. <laughs> Once again, I say to you, this is our life. And there we go, once it's up, we have our dirt our beeswax, and most importantly for now, our honey. And to get our honey into those jars, all we have to do is fill up our bucket and drop our bucket off into our jar. We're gonna put our honeycombs in there. We're gonna put a torch under this one, and we're gonna ask it to make the clay bee nectar block. There it goes, two minutes. So I'm gonna fill this up with enough to make all three blocks. And in the meanwhile, of course, I harvested lots and lots and lots of honeycomb. Now that all three of our clay bees are all grown up and we have all three clay nectar blocks, 
let's finally give these bees a proper home. But while I'm doing that, I think to make the most of our time, I'm, let's go ahead and breed our iron bees because they do take a while to grow up. The iron bee is a wood bee and a cobble bee. So let's grab some cobble and some wood and... There he is! Oh my goodness, he's so cute! Ah! <laughs> uh, and they look so awesome. I, I love, I love the way the like metal bees look. They have like that cluster of eye. Oh, he's so cool. All right, so while he grows up, let's build our home for the clay bees, which means expanding our island, of course. Okay. All right, that's just not fair. <laughs> but sir, I don't have any emeralds. I don't have emeralds yet. We don't have the emerald bee. <laughs> so sad. Oh wow, it's crazy. We just got leather for the first time. I don't know where that came from. Ah, there he is. I had already gathered up and crafted a bunch of the resources I knew I wanted to build with. So it was just a matter of building something I liked the look of. I decided to go with a very literal translation of bee house. I thought it would be really adorable to have all of these little houses, almost like a little town street with these houses of bees going all the way down the row. So that's what I did. And I love the macaws roof, but I've never been able to use them before. So I took the excuse and tried them out and I love them. They're a little finicky at first to get used to, but they're so, so cute. And I do feel like it added a lot to the final build. And lastly, all they're gonna need is a hive. So I thought now would be a great chance to make our first tier three beehives. So I have some tier ones here. So we've already added grass. And next we can use a beeswax and honeycomb. And I will use wood here because that's what we have the most of. And there we go. Our first tier two beehives. Not only can these hold more bees, they also hold more honeycomb. So while it does take longer to convert, just harvesting it like once or twice a day is so much more efficient than having to harvest it multiple times like I have to do with these. First, we set down our campfire, then our beehive facing the right direction, please. No. And then right in front here, we add our nectar blocks. Then we can add all of our clay bees. And pretty soon, we're gonna have some clay honeycomb. I quickly whipped up a second bee house, changing the design just a little bit. And by the time that little house was done, the clay bees were ready for the first harvest. Let's go. Thank you. They're so cute. This means we finally have an easy source for unlimited clay, which I'm gonna start turning into clay blocks and cook into terracotta so we can make some botany pots so that we can automate our grass to upgrade our tier beehives. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> we can finally get these guys set up and properly housed. He doing a spin. Now all we have to do is wait for these little guys to do their thing. And then we're gonna finally be in the Iron Age. And after a few minutes, we have our first iron honeycomb. Also, we haven't eaten either of these yet, so there is a possibility we could totally get some extra hearts from this. Once I'm, once I'm hungry, hold on. <laughs> Let me work up a little bit of an appetite. Actually, a really great way to work up an appetite is to use the uh, center centrifuge because if you watch, see, immediately it uses, it, it's basically transferring hunger for power in a way, kind of like the create hand crank does. There we go. We got some, we got some hungry points. So let's try clay. Mm, not the best mouthfeel. No, how about iron? Oh, wow. Okay. That, you know, 
Have you ever had like liver, like chicken liver? I mean, I haven't, but I would imagine it would taste kind of like this, a little, a little irony. <laughs> so sorry. Wait, let's finish this dirt. And now we're gonna get our very first ironing gets. As the sun is setting on our 43rd day of our Skyviews Island, we have iron ingots. Finally, let's go. When I woke up in the morning, I had a bit of a tough choice to make. How is the best way for me to use my first? Oh, um, I, I made a pick. <laughs> I'm a Minecrafter. I got iron. I made an iron pick. <laughs> is what we do. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all our Cookie Crew members. And I'd like to welcome Ash and Fuzzy Cub to the Cookie Crew. I'd like to give a big thank you to Danish for being part of the Cookie Club and to Gimli, Anonymous, and Felms for being a part of the Cookie Click. Thank you all so, so much. And with that, my name's Evett. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give a like and subscribe for more shenanigans. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. Bye!